So you just bought a telescope and now you need help finding things in the night sky. You need a Telrad. A Telrad is a very simple piece of equipment that goes on the side of your telescope. Turn it on. It creates a three ring red target. You just point and aim at the section of the sky that you're interested in and finding objects is a cinch. A Telrad. With it, finding objects in the night sky is easy. Without it, you're essentially flying blind. And we're going to show you how to install a Telrad on the side of your telescope in this episode of Telescope Tips. When you're using a telescope, which everyone wants a telescope, the, the only problem is you get a narrow field of view. Uh, sometimes one degree or with a wide angle eyepiece, maybe a degree and a half. And uh, everybody wants to see things magnified and that's fine, but that gives you a problem of trying to find the, find the things that you're looking for. Because it's easy to see the stars and to see the constellations, but most of what you're looking for, the globular clusters and the, and the nebulae, um, those are invisible to the naked eye, at least from, um, uh, from the suburbs. So you want to, come up with a method to find those things that you can't see with your eye and usually you do that by star hopping. For star hopping you use your finder scope. Sometimes even the finder scope is difficult because the finder scope, um, depending on what kind of finder scope you have, the uh, images can be upside down or reversed and so it, it becomes difficult if you look at a reference like a book or if you look on starry nights and you're trying to find that object. Uh, even, sometimes even with the finder scope because of the images being reversed or upside down you have difficulty finding them or you can't even see them in the finder scope and, and so, so the solution to that is a till rad. A, a till rad you'll see there's three circles. The outer circle is uh, four degrees, the inner circle is two degrees, and um, and the smallest circle, the bullseye circle, is half a degree. Half a degree is the same size as the full moon. So those three circles will help you to find the deep space objects that you're looking for. And so um, if you're going to install a tail, tail rad, excuse me, what I recommend doing is go ahead and put in an eyepiece and go ahead and put on your finder scope and that'll help you with placing the tail rad. So here you can see I've got the right angle finder scope that a lot of that I use for a lot of uh, my telescopes. And I tell you, a, a finder like this is great, but by itself, it's almost completely useless because once we install it, we're just going to install it here. Again, if all you have is this finder scope right here. Um, it's really hard unless you're just kind of eyeing it and lining it up to find whatever object you're looking for. And it's almost, you know, it's almost impossible or, or basically useless just to look at it this way. And that's where the Telrad comes in. Right. So the, um, uh, now this particular finder is a correct image finder. So similar to just like a binocular, you know, all the stars are in the right position. What I mean is they're not flipped or upside down. Some finders that are um, some of the less expensive finders, you have the same problem as with the telescope. It's, uh, it only magnifies nine times, but the images are upside down or reverse, so it makes it difficult to star hop. Um, now with this finder, it's a correct image finder, so that's pretty good, and it's pretty good for star clusters, but you may still have a problem, like for example, if you're trying to hunt down a galaxy, this, um, this is nine times, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, it still may not be, you know, enough magnification to actually see the galaxy. So you're still just kind of hunting around and, and you can't find anything. Now that's where a tail rad comes in because a tail rad can help you find galaxies even though you can't see them. Now, how is that possible? You have to think about, um, you have to think about star hopping. So let's take the Big Dipper because because everybody is pretty familiar with the Big Dipper. And uh, you take something like the handle of the Big Dipper. The uh, the two stars at the end, 
Uh, a lot of people remember the proper names. I don't bother with that because there's too many constellations and that's a lot of proper names. So I, I usually just use the, uh, the Greek alphabet and, um, and I remember the stars that way. So the two stars at the handle, I think that's uh, Zeta and Eta. Um, now most people when they star hop, what they do is they use triangulation. They'll, if, if you're looking for example, the galaxy M51, if you make a triangle with, again, the handle of the Big Dipper, and you look at Eta and Zeta, and if you imagine that those are two points of the triangle, then M51 would be the third point. You make a triangle. And why is that helpful? Because the tail rad, the outer circle is four degrees. And if you put the, the circle of the tail rad on um, Ada uh, and, um, and the Big Dipper, and you move that circle down two times, just one time centered on a Ada, and then one more time down, that's gonna be the triangle. So the, so the reason the tail rad will help you with that is because the tail rad with the three circles, again, the outer circle is four degrees, the inner circle is two degrees, and the innermost circle is half a degree. So if you're going to star hop, you can use the tail rad to knowing the, the uh, three relative degrees, you can use that to star hop to the deep space objects that you're looking for, even if you can't see them in the finder. So before you install um, your tail rad mount, what I suggest you do is go ahead and put in an eyepiece and go ahead and put on your finder because you want the scope to be as it is when you're going to use it. Otherwise, if you have this finder off, well, and you install your tail rad, you might accidentally install it too close and it may not be comfortable to use. So go ahead and set everything up the same way you're going to use it when you observe. So Jeremy, can you demonstrate for us looking through the eyepiece? Yep. And then if you're going to use your finder. So if I'm looking for something, I'm typically in this position right here, right. give or take. And then again, this is my fine tuning, or no, my coarse tuning, or my fine tuning if you will. Right. So I'm about right here. So the Telerad so, is gonna be about right here. Yeah, so where would be a comfortable position for you about right here, right? Yeah, that's the, uh, so essentially when I'm looking for something, let's say it's closer to the zenith. Right. I'm gonna be down here, more or less, looking right. through the Telerad. So uh, how, how about right here, Jeremy? No. No. <laughs> now I gotta go a little too low. Okay, yeah, so, so usually you're going to install the Telerad base as high as possible, okay? And then, you can see this is about as far as he can go uh, this way on the tube because of uh, the, um, the mounting for the spider. This a nut for the spider here. Yep. So we will install the tail rad base here. Now you may want to also invest in a tail rad riser. When you install the tail rad riser, it's actually going to raise up the tail rad to this position, which makes it a lot easier when Jeremy, when Jeremy leans over the scope and looks through the tail rad, the riser is going to make that a lot easier. All right, so we've talked about where we're going to place it, more or less. We have an idea relative to the viewfinder and the eyepiece. Now we're going to talk about actually installing the base of the tail rad. Right. So the first thing is um, you'll see that there's some double face tape on the back and it's just peel and stick. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Basically, you're just taping it on there. Right. That, that, that being said, you don't, want to, um, you don't want to place it somewhere and say, oh, you know, I don't like that spot and try to take it up and put it somewhere else. Make sure that when you peel this off and when you stick it, it's you're sticking it where you want it. Now, do you, do you want the screws to be facing the viewfinder or away from the viewfinder? I would say away from the viewfinder. It's a little bit easier to reach your hand around yeah. and uh, tighten the screws. 
if you have them this way, eh, that's fine, you can do it, but um, you might find the finer strokes in your way. So I always put it away. All right, so screws away, or uh, yeah. yeah, screws away, away from the viewfinder. That's, right. that's the best place. And so the, once you've uh, nailed the position that you um, want to place the uh, tail rad base, um, you want to place it as square as possible to the tube. Um, now you, you can adjust the tail rad. That being said, you know, you don't want to mount it like this. And one really easy way to do it, I mean, you're trying to get it as high as possible, right? Is you can use the rim of the tube and just press against that. Down the hill. And, and you're done. Yep. Leave a little bit of space for this, um, this uh, spider screw. This is for tightening the spider or loosening the spider. You don't want the tail rad base to be so close that you can't make any adjustments. So again, we're finding the perfect position to mount the uh, tail rad base. And so we're going to press it against the rim and we're going to get close, but not too close so that we can still adjust the spider if we need to. All right, so it's the moment of truth. Here we go. Hope I do it right. So we're at actually peeling the tape now. And we're going to go ahead and install the tail rad base. And you can see it's pretty easy to just pull that off. Like this? Yep. No, <laughs> not like that. You can see he's lining it up with the rim of the top of the telescope. About as perpendicular as possible in line with the tube. Perfect, right here. That's right. And down it goes and you got a little bit of space there between the spider screw. And now he just presses down and holds it for a few seconds. And there you go, it's on, it's installed. And uh, you see it's sticking, looks like it's in the right place right there, almost exactly perpendicular. In fact, it is hugging right up against the rim of the telescope and just far enough away from the spider screw. So basically that's it. Now we've got our base on, now, again, if you have the tail rad installed, it can be a little bit inconvenient and uncomfortable to look through it to find something. So we've got the tail rad riser, which just fits right on there pretty conveniently. Screw that in, and basically all it is is just rising the base up and then putting the uh, tail rad on top of that so that it's a lot easier to line that up. So. Right. Basically, you, you still have to lean over, but you don't have to lean over as much. Yep. So again, a tail rad is an essential piece of equipment to have for a, a Dobsonian telescope in terms of helping you find things. I don't know about you, Brian, but I can't go without one. Right. Now, it, it, some people may think it's it's cheating. It's like a, you know, maybe it's a piece of equipment that aids you a little bit too much. But right. if you don't have a computer-mounted telescope, a go-to scope, right. um, you're still basically finding things on your own. Right. So I don't know what your philosophy is on that, but I still think a tail rad is essential. Right. And, and personally, I can do without this, but I can't do without the tail rad. Right. If, if you had to choose between one of the two, you would actually use the tail rad right. and nothing else. Because you, theoretically, you could, you could go out and knock out a handful of objects, a lot of objects, probably everything you're, you're trying to find just right. with the tail rad and now with the finder scope. Now, for me personally, what I do is I use both. I use the tail rad for kind of my coarse tuning to more or less um, zoom in on the object, kind of what you were talking about with M51. And then I use my, my viewfinder as my fine tuning. So I can look through my viewfinder. If I know I'm looking for a globular, uh, a globular cluster, for instance, I can zoom in more or less where it's gonna be. And then I use this, my viewfinder, to look for an object that's magnified, that's, that's slightly fuzzy, it doesn't look like a star. Right. And that's a clue that I'm looking for either a nebula or a globular cluster or a galaxy. Exactly. Okay, thanks again, Brian. So just some simple tips for installing a Telrad. Again, an essential piece of equipment to have when you're looking for objects on a Dobsonian. I want to remind you guys, again, the Memphis Astronomical Society meets the first Friday of every month at Christian Brothers University, Assisi Hall, room 155. We also conduct two dark sky observing sessions, if it's clear, in an area about 45 minutes from Memphis. If you're interested in learning more, our website is memphisastro.org. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. 
and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more telescope tips. For Brian Hancock, I'm Jeremy Veldman. We look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Clear skies, all.